Today we're going to be tying TF's Choice Bunny Royale. A little bit about the name of this fly is it started off as a variant of a Guide's Choice Hare's Ear. And then with the colors, Vox from our Discord said anything with green and red in it is automatically royal. And since this was the best fly and the last fly standing from my Easter Flies video, I thought Bunny Royale sounds like a good name to me. So that's why it kind of has this stupid name. This fly is pretty much purely an attractor fly. It's not really meant to imitate anything. If you squint hard enough, it might look like a green caddis. But it's really just meant to get the fish's attention and is buggy enough to get them to think it's something to eat. The bead's got some UV properties in it that might trigger something in the fish and it's got a red hot spot. So it's really just meant to get the fish to eat because they're curious about it. The idea for this fly pretty much started out as one of the fun flies I tied for my Easter flies video, but I got such aggressive takes on it that I thought there might be some underlying potential there. So I tied up a few different prototypes and tested them out, and this ended up being the best iteration, and it caught a bunch of fish for me on the middle Provo recently. So I encourage you to tie a few up and check it out for yourself. If you're not a tire, they're available in my store and the link in the description in sizes 12 through 18. So in the vise I've got a Firehole 516 jig hook. This is a size 14. It's accompanied with a 3.0 millimeter slotted tungsten bead from Firehole. This is their speckled bead series and it's lightning bug in color. This has some UV properties so it'll glow under UV light. I'm going to tie in my materials with UTC 70 denier in red. This will help us build a hot spot at the end. So I'm just taking touching wraps down to the end of the straight part of the hook. For tailing material, I'm going to be using hair's mask, and I'm taking some of the lighter hairs from the cheek section. I'm going to get the tips aligned and then tie in kind of a short little bushy tail. Try to make sure you're only tying along the straight chunk of the hook and not in the bend, that way your tail stays in line with the rest of the fly. I'm gonna lock it in and then trim off the butt ends and you can clean up some of the messy fibers or you could just take thread wraps over them. I'm cleaning them up a little here. Next we're going to be tying in our wire ribbing. This is UTC Ultra Wire in chartreuse color in the small size. We're just going to tie it in and then take our thread down to the tail. For a body dubbing I'm using Hairs Air Plus Dubbin in Insect Green. This is out of my little 12 color dubbing container. I'm trying to build up a dubbing rope here. You kind of want to add a little bit of taper in it, so start your dubbing needle as thin as possible and then kind of build up the bulk from there. You don't want a huge taper, just a slight one. So just start wrapping or dubbing, building up a body. You need a little more to build up towards the eye, just add a little bit more. Once your dubbing's in, start taking forward wraps with wire just to add a little bit of segmentation, shininess, and 
durability to the fly. Bring it up to behind the bead, secure it, and then helicopter it off. On a size 15, about four or five wraps is correct. With a soft tackle, I'm gonna build one out of CDC fibers. This is a Betis colored CDC feather. Dark Olive works as well. You know, put your feather fibers into a material clip and then snip them off. We're gonna be using a split thread dubbing loop here, but any way you do wanna do your dubbing loops is fine. So I'm just gonna split the thread here. Open up the loop, put the fibers in, trap them, get them oriented how I want, and then I'm gonna close the rope back up. Next we're going to wrap the fibers around behind the bead, preen them back with every wrap or so and that'll get them oriented in the proper orientation. Once they're in, build up a little bit of a thread collar for a red hot spot. Go in and do a six turn whip finish. and then snip off your thread. I like to go in and then clean up the CDC fibers a bit. They don't need to be uniform, they just need to get some of the long stragglers out of there. You can also clean up a little that you trapped with your thread. That's not necessary though, just makes it look a bit cleaner. And then that's your TF Choice Bunny Royale. Very simple attractor pattern, gets down quick, works really well on your Euron Infrig. So here I've got my Loon Infinity Light. I'm just going to show you how much the UV bead lights up. The camera really doesn't do it justice how bright it is. When you do this on your tying bench, do not look at the bead, it'll hurt your eyes. That's how much UV glow it's got. But anyways, that's the fly. Like I said, it's super simple, super effective. You should tie a few up to test out for yourself. The trout really love them. If you're not a tire, again, you can check them out in my store at troutfliesutah.com. Go to the Euronymphs and it'll be there. If you enjoyed this fly tying tutorial, please like it down below. And if you want to get notified of when I do another tutorial, you can subscribe to my channel. Anyways, into the fish cages. Wow, came out of the air for that. I did not expect that. Where's my net? As usual. On the green. Oh, we weren't on camera, were we? <laughs> on the green, Guides Choice Easter Bunny. It's pretty little brown. 
Look at that. Pretty. He jumped and I helped pull him like five feet out of the air right there. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Want him on the reel. And we're all wrapped up. Okay. Angry. Not bad on the prototype again. It's a chunky fish. Take a drink. Oh, it came out perfect. Beautiful fish. It's a nice one. Ooh. Missed one. There we go. That's a nice one. Bring me back to the camera. Chunky, chunky brown. This fly is pretty good. Come on, let's get you released. Yes, you're upset. I would be too. There he goes. <laughs> 